A couple of weeks back, while I was uh, finishing off my outpatient department work, I had a call from the emergency department. The emergency physician was quite distressed because there was this young man, he was about 36 years old, who was shifted from another town in an ambulance and uh, he was uh, visibly disoriented and agitated. He also had jaundice, so his eyes were deep yellow. So without much delay, they triaged him and then transferred him to the intensive care unit. In the intensive care unit, he was put on IV medications. The intensive care unit staff started him on some IV lines, put in some needles to give him medications. He was lying still, but he was moving around in between. Uh, he was slightly disoriented, but there were two or three people who were trying to calm him down and uh, hold him down so that the nursing staff can actually put in lines for him so that we can start the medications to calm him down as fast as possible. So while this was going on, the patient was very clearly focused on one of the staff members, one of the nursing staff who was trying to get a line in his vein on the hand. So while she was doing that, he started screaming as if he's seen some monstrous figure or seen something terrifying. And then without any delay, he jumped up, got on his bed, took a small tray where they store these small medicines, took that and hit the nurse on her arm quite forcefully. It was a very terrifying incident and uh, the nurse developed a contusion over the arm where he hit her and uh, she just fell back. Now other nursing staff, including the male uh, nurses, they came down uh, suddenly, uh, held him down and they restrained him on the bed uh, using cotton pieces to tie him down. And once he was tied down, they gave him uh, an intramuscular injection because it was not easy to get a vein because he was so agitated. And slow and steady, he drifted away into sleep. The nursing staff was taken to the emergency and uh, the emergency doctor took few x-rays and thankfully there was no fracture of the bone, but there was visible contusions, uh, blood clots over the skin and her muscle was very sore. She was given a few days off to you know, recover. Now, wh what, what happened here? Why is this so important for us to discuss? The patient was apparently well about three months ago. Since three months, he's been eating very less. He was not showing any interest in his work. Uh, he worked as a computer engineer uh, in a town uh, for a local company as a coder. He was not uh, sleeping well. Uh, he lived with his parents and his uh, elder brother and their family. He was unmarried, he was not married. And uh, slow and steady, his behavior started to change and he started to take less interest in his work as well as at home. So he used to spend very less time at home. Even if he was home, he used to be in his room most of the time. So that is when the family actually figured out that he was drinking heavily. So he used to consume about two liters of alcohol every day. And this kept on going on and on and on. And they could not control him. When they tried, he became violent towards them to an extent that uh, he was even ready to beat up the, his brother's kids, little kids. So his brain functions were completely haywire. And uh, once this alcohol use uh, went on and on. They did something very drastic, the family. They took him forcefully, put him in a car and took him to a nearby uh, hospital where there was a provision for inpatient management of alcohol uh, use disorder, which this person suffered from, to give him medications, to counsel him, to, to take care of his mental health, etc. Slow and steady, the whole admission process went smoothly. Uh, even though he was not willing for this, somehow they managed to get him admitted there. The doctors there saw that during the evaluation that is bilirubin, that is his liver function tests were abnormal and his eyes were visibly yellowish in color. He was, there was some jaundice. So they specified that, you know, this patient cannot be managed here because he needs advanced care for his liver disease also. It's not just the alcohol use disorder that is a problem here. And because of that, the family was advised to transfer him in the morning uh, to a uh, higher center. But by the time it was morning, he was visibly very agitated and disoriented and they took him in an ambulance and came to our emergency as soon as possible. And uh, the rest is all the terrifying commotion that uh, happened in the uh, ICU where a uh, nursing staff nearly got her hand uh, broken. Now this is part of alcohol use disorder and there are some things that we need to realize what alcohol can do to the brain. So why was this patient so agitated? The first thing that we need to understand is that the impact of alcohol consumption on the brain is not limited to heavy drinkers. It can even happen in social drinkers. So alcohol can reduce the drinker's brain size and volume. This is a condition known as cerebral atrophy. In this, the brain degeneration can start even with the first drink and the brain degeneration can increase with subsequent drinks, even in social drinkers. So brain volume improves once alcohol is stopped. Now this man was a heavy alcohol user. 
So the more and more he used alcohol, the less and less his brain volume became and his brain function deteriorated. So at some point, alcohol was controlling him and he had lost complete control of his life. And because he knew that he had complete loss of control on over his life, alcohol falsely gave him that promise that, you know, consuming more and more alcohol would uh, reward him with that instant dopamine hit that he craved for. Because everything else around him was in shambles. His work was not going well. His sleep was not going well. He was eating less. It was He was slowly getting wasted. And the more and more he drank al- alcohol, the more and more alcohol took hold of him. So alcohol increases sociability, but it does so by subtly intoxicating the subject. So somebody who says, you know, I am not a heavy drinker, I'm only drinking on weekends or I'm drinking only on social occasions. That itself means that typical sociability that you enjoy with that alcohol in your hand with your friends is not because alcohol is benefiting you. It's actually subtly intoxicating you. It's it's controlling your brain slow and steady. And with increased drinking, the intoxication becomes life threatening like what we saw in our patient. So there are a lot of myths surrounding alcohol that alcohol can improve survival and it's a good healthy lifestyle option. But this has been proven wrong time and again since the last few decades and uh, there is no health benefits for alcohol. So alcohol reduces your chances of prolonged survival and it does not in any way improve your heart health. So these are all myths related to alcohol. But our our discussion today is on alcohol and brain specifically. What alcohol does to the brain is that it increases your brain age. So in heavy drinkers, it has been shown that alcohol increased their chronological age by 11 years compared to their biological brain age. Can you imagine that? So that it, it basically leads to brain rot. Occasional consumption, also prolonged consumption and then heavy consumption leads to slow and steady brain rot. So there are various terrifying effects of alcohol on the brain. So the first is what we saw in our patient, in my patient that we discussed, which is known as alcohol withdrawal. So when heavy drinkers stop drinking alcohol, alcohol withdrawal presents initially as minor symptoms, you know, such as mild anxiety, headaches, loss of sleep, etc. But then progress to hallucinations, mostly visual hallucination and auditory hallucinations. Patients can actually see things that are not there or hear things that are not there. And this terrifies them and they become paranoid. Very importantly, in heavy drinkers, during the withdrawal time, seizures can also happen. So they go into convulsions and that can be life-threatening. And these start within 12 to 24 hours of stopping alcohol. Now, hallucinations are the most commonly terrifying events that we see in alcohol withdrawal. The auditory hallucinations mostly involve accusatory or threatening voices. So they'll feel that, you know, there are people telling them that they're going to get killed or something bad is happening to them and they get paranoid. And uh, the visual hallucinations usually take the form of seeing multiple snakes and uh, monstrous figures that actually terrifies them and they become violent and they become very aggressive. Now in its most severe form, alcohol withdrawal results in a condition known as delirium tremens. Now this is terrifying and this is what my patient eventually developed uh, in hospital. They develop high grade of fever, they have high heart rate, they have drenching sweats, they are highly agitated, they are violent, they have high aggression and disoriented. Uh, This can happen anywhere between three to eight days after stopping alcohol. So this event uh, that happened to my patient, ultimately even though we could calm him down with medications and relax him, he had already aspirated quite a lot. You know, because of that violence and aggression and disorientation, he aspirated his own saliva and uh, oral secretions and that resulted in him getting a pneumonia. So we had to put him on a ventilator to completely calm him down and take care of his lungs also, including the brain work. So we had to work a lot on the brain functions, the lung functions and also the liver which was failing. So we did not do anything for the liver at the moment uh, when he was in the ICU in initial days because we had to take care of other organ systems that were being damaged by alcohol before we actually looked at the liver uh, eventually. Now the other aspect of chronic alcohol use is that or in heavy drinkers who drink occasionally but they drink heavily during this occasion is something known as thiamine deficiency. So our human body is incapable of producing uh, vitamin B1 or thiamine and is fully dependent on getting this uh, from the diet. So what alcohol does is reduce absorption of thiamine in our body and also it also reduces magnesium levels in the body whereby Uh, thiamine absorption also gets impacted. In chronic alcohol use or heavy alcohol drinkers uh, who also take food very low, so food intake is very low in heavy drinkers, there is heavy reduction of thiamine absorption in the body. So once there is chronic thiamine deficiency, it uh, results in a toxic effect on the brain cells leading to a condition known as Wernicke Korsakoff psychosis. So Wernicke Korsakoff psychosis has two parts, one is Wernicke encephalopathy and Korsakoff psychosis. 
So when patients develop vernicke encephalopathy, they become confused. Uh, they cannot walk properly. They have problems with the eye uh, muscles, and they are usually bedridden. But it's important to also realize that this is also a life-threatening condition. Now, patients with vernicke encephalopathy, less than about close to five percent, can present with severe depressed level of consciousness, and they can eventually go into a coma and die. And uh, this can happen in the absence of liver disease or any other organ disease. It can just be because of the brain vernicke encephalopathy, and patients can die. Now, Korsakoff psychosis is something more permanent. So, uh, Korsakoff psychosis results when permanent damage affects areas of the brain that is involved with memory. And uh, these patients have minimal content in conversations. They make up stories of events. It's something known as confabulation. So, you ask them what the name is or where they are from. They'll say something else altogether. Uh, maybe their uh, brother's name or what uh, brother's what his brother's work. is or what his friends address is things like that they'll they'll miss a lot of things in the sentences between sentences and they fill those gaps with something that they cooked up and uh, these patients require full time care at home because it's a permanent condition and they become a huge burden to the family physically uh, mentally and also financially so my patient eventually was taken off the ventilator he did not regain his full consciousness level we gave him high dose of thiamine we gave him antiepileptics uh, to reduce his seizures we also started him on slow and graded nutritional therapy and eventually after spending about 3 uh, weeks in the icu he was shifted out of the icu into the room where he spent another 2 more weeks so almost 4 to 6 weeks he was with us in the hospital and we started off uh, treating his alcohol related liver disease along with his uh, nutritional deficiencies and his brain disease Uh, a psychiatrist and a psychologist took care of his mental health disorder and eventually after 6 weeks he was discharged he still follows up with us and uh, he seems to be doing well uh, even though he occasionally gets thoughts of craving but that's taken care of because we do have telemedicine facilities and people look at patients who stay far away on a very regular basis because alcohol use disorder is a very chronic prolonged disease so your patients can relapse any time It is said that almost 80 to 88 percent patients relapse in the first year after diagnosis. So we have to keep a close watch on them and uh, get them to become healthier. Alcohol and its effects on the brain is just one part of what alcohol can do to you. And you should understand that it's the most important thing because the brain is what helps us do purposeful things in our lives. And uh, hitting the core just wastes you ultimately. So the main terrifying effects that alcohol has on the brain is number one is that it can degenerate your brain it can reduce your brain volume thereby leading to slow and steady deterioration brain functions you will not be able to think well you won't be able to function well small tasks or complex tasks even you won't be able to give you 100% to it if you even consume occasional alcohol the second is in uh, heavy drinkers it can lead to alcohol withdrawal withdrawal seizures hallucinations a terrifyingly fatal condition known as delirium tremens it does not just put the patient in danger it also puts others around the patient in danger like what happened to my staff nurse in more violent patients in more aggressive patients that i have seen uh, previously i have had patients who have taken needles and uh, stabbed uh, the staff with those needles there are instances where patients have cut staff with uh, sharp objects in the hospital and also patients who have jumped off wards and uh, to their death so that is why if you see the psychiatric department where uh, alcohol use disorder patients are managed most of these are completely covered and there are no balconies and there are no ways for these patients to get out and harm themselves or harm others and all of this because of alcohol and uh, it's something that is avoidable completely it is your choice you decide that you want to have a healthy life and that that is a life that does not feature alcohol so i hope you have uh, learned a bit more about what alcohol can do to the brain than what you already know and i have already discussed three most important terrifying effects of alcohol on the brain including brain degeneration uh, verney korsakoff psychosis and delirium tremens we'll have more of these conversations in subsequent videos where i go a little more deeper into what alcohol can do to the brain at a more deeper level and how that affects our day to day activities and functions even without you knowing it So that is for another time. So until then, take care and have a great week ahead.